Today I'm going to talk about affirmative defenses to conspiracy. Since uh, conspiracy is an inchoate crime like attempt, we might expect it has very similar or somewhat similar affirmative defenses unique to inchoate crimes. Um, so we're going to look at the, the two basic ones that were in the world of attempt, uh, but it's much briefer. The rules here are pretty straightforward, and in fact, um, it's very difficult for a defendant to have an affirmative defense to a conspiracy charge that's viable, uh, that gets the jury, and then wins. Um, so as with attempt, uh, the doctrine of impossibility makes no sense. Um, its role here is just uh, for sake of completeness of mentioning it. There are a couple dissenting opinions. I don't even think there's a majority opinion out there recognizing impossibility for conspiracy, but we are not going to worry about it because the doctrine is an incoherent mess. Uh, so our bigger concern is abandonment, withdrawal, or renunciation. So all these words are different labels for the same concept here. So again, like attempt, uh, this affirmative defense only kicks in after we decide that the defendant has committed all the act requirements for the conspiracy, the mens rea for the conspiracy, and then is abandoning, withdrawing, renouncing, renouncing uh, uh, the conspiracy. And so uh, as the case of casement uh, versus Arkansas illustrates, uh, even getting this um, claim to the jury is difficult because unlike attempt, where a defendant only had to voluntarily renounce uh, and abandon their crime, uh, the abandonment rule for conspiracy requires more. And you can see the Arkansas version within the text of the opinion or the part of the model penal code that is excerpted in the book beforehand. And the key word you'll notice there, which is a bit unusual, you don't see it in statutes very much, is thwart. Right. So in addition to the voluntary renunciation and the complete you know, abandoning of the conspiracy, a defendant is required to thwart the conspiracy. Um, and as you'll see in the Arkansas opinion, um, the Arkansas statute includes some specific examples of this. Right. So it says that they can um, uh, alert the authorities. Right. It says give timely warning to appropriate law enforcement authorities. And that's at least a little clear. So even if the if they give timely warning and law enforcement somehow messes it up and doesn't actually foil the the, the conspiracy, the defendant still has um, a renunciation or withdrawal claim that goes to the jury. Um, but if they don't alert authorities, they have to otherwise make a substantial effort to prevent the commission of the offense under circumstances manifesting the complete voluntary withdrawal. And uh, so you could basically, you know, sabotage uh, uh, your conspiracy, conspiracy or your conspirators so they cannot complete the crime. So casement here is a basic drug sting, a little higher quantity uh, than we say we saw in Mondello at the beginning of the chapter. So twenty-five thousand dollars in cash in in the nineties, nineteen ninety-two, uh, is being offered for uh, a large quantity of cocaine. Um, casement is there uh, with Mr. Kramer, and they are uh, in, about to engage in this purchase, which is really being uh, ma uh, um, being bought from a undercover. Operative, and so uh, the actual interaction here in the description of the facts is pretty quick, uh, which is that after uh, the appellant retrieves the sack of the cocaine, placed it between his legs, and looked into the sack, uh, he saw that it was powder and not solid brick, uh, which was what they were hoping for. And so he says, This shit's whacked, uh, indicating that he didn't like it. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's the slide. Uh, I didn't make the meme, it was our already out there, but it seemed appropriate under the circumstances. Um, so the appellant at this point becomes angry and threw the sack back across the seat at Officer Scott and told him to get out of the vehicle. So this seems like a pretty strong case of complete and voluntary renunciation, which is the standard for attempt. In other words, the, there's no third party intervention. He doesn't know it's the police dealing to him, so it's, he's not under threat of immediate arrest. There's not resistance, um, but he doesn't even get to present his claim to the jurors, and the appellate court agrees here because he doesn't thwart the crime. Right? In other words, he doesn't alert the authorities. He doesn't call 911 and say, by the way, somebody just tried to sell me cocaine. I think you should know about that. Um, 
Doesn't sabotage it, right? He throws it back to them um, so the cocaine can still be resold. Might have been more interesting if he actually, say, uh, threw it in the river or something crazy like that. But as it is, the court's, I think, quite right to say appellant did not ter terminate his participation in the conspiracy by voluntarily renunciating his cr or renouncing his criminal purpose, giving a timely warning to law enforcement authorities, or preventing the commission of the offense voluntarily. Uh, appellant's refusal to purchase the cocaine was based on quality and not renunciation, um, because it doesn't include thwarting here. And so that's right. If you can't even provide evidence to meet the various parts of the Arkansas statute for renunciation withdrawal, you don't get to present it to the jurors. Okay, this is the, the common outcome. And this really is a harsh rule in terms of uh, abandonment. And it doesn't really give people incentives uh, to leave conspiracies. Uh, but there is one alternative path, which in many cases is better. Oh, I should mention one thing, of course. Uh, withdrawal and renunciation of conspiracies is only possible under the MPC. It is not recognized under the common law. Whereas at least some common law jurisdictions have recognized abandonment of attempt not true for conspiracy. So this is an MPC only rule. Uh, but even in a common law or MPC jurisdiction, there is another way for the defendant to frame their argument. Not so much in the casement fact pattern. He's pretty much doomed here. Uh, but one way, particularly with a conspiracy uh, that will be ongoing after the defendant leaves, um, but the defendant has made absolutely clear they don't want any part of it. And we'll look at this in one of our film clip examples to see a, maybe an example that fits what I'm describing here. Um, the defendant can try and argue at trial that the first conspiracy of which they were a member ended, uh, but uh, uh, the second one, um, you know, it, where the cr substantive crime is ultimately committed, say if it's a conspiracy to commit homicide, conspiracy to do drugs, in other words, the one that creates all these vicarious liabilities uh, for substantive offenses, uh, that one they weren't part of. So there's two conspiracies. Now, this isn't as good as an abandonment defense because you're, you're still you know, conceding guilt on the first conspiracy charge. But you can lessen the criminal liability for any vicariously liable substantive offenses if you can detach uh, your conspiracy, which didn't complete anything and is just an inchoate crime, with the conspiracy that uh, was completed. But that's just a juror question of whether they believe the prosecution story that this is one conspiracy or factually it was two conspiracies. Um, and so as I said, it's not is you know good for the defendant because you can still get a, a very serious sentence based on the initial conspiracy charge, but it is another way to repackage the abandonment type issues uh, by making it an act requirement claim. Uh, but that's it for affirmative defenses for conspiracy. Not a lot of complexity here, uh, but there is a narrow window uh, under the MPC, uh, which some jurisdictions have adopted, like Arkansas, which allows a defendant who really leaves a conspiracy and thwarts it, usually by alerting the authorities, to uh, at least present that argument to the jury and be found not guilty as a result.